Hi, my name is Methat Al Masri, and today's video is about using Aspire with gRPC. We will start with a simple gRPC application that involves a gRPC backend and a Blazor frontend. The gRPC server connects to a SQLite database. To test the sample solution, we must first start the gRPC server app, then start the client app. This is somewhat tedious. By introducing .NET Aspire into the mix, we only need to start one project to get the solution to work. .NET Aspire also gives us many more benefits. There's a companion article and you can find the link at the bottom of this slide. In order to follow up with this video, you will need .NET 9.8. You will need to install the .NET Aspire workload. And of course, for the editor, I will be using Visual Studio Code with the C Sharp Dev Kit extension. You can, if you like, use Visual Studio 2022. To start with, let's update all the workloads on our machine with .NET workload update. In my case, because I'm running on a Mac, it asks me for more privileges. So I'll type in sudo here and enter my admin password and it should be off to the races. Of course, I will speed up the process so you don't have to wait while it's updating. After it's done, I will install the Aspire workload with .NET workload install Aspire. And again, it needs the elevated privileges. So I'll type in sudo here and off it goes. So now at this point, we have our .NET Aspire workload. We will start with a .NET 9.0 solution that involves a gRPC backend and a Blazor frontend. So please clone the code from this GitHub repo on the right hand side. I will copy this and paste it in a terminal window and I'll go into the new directory which is grpc blazor solution. Now, if we look at the directory, we have two folders, the blazor grpc client and the grpc students server. So of course we have to run the backend first and the backend is grpc students. So let's go into that directory, grpc students, and we can run that with .NET watch. So you can see now that it's listening on port 5099. Next, I'm going to go into the client folder and run the client with .NET watch again. This displays our Blazor application and we can check it out and see that it all works. And I'm adding a student and it should show up here. I can edit the student, maybe make this an edge update and delete the student. For your information, all the data is saved in a SQLite database on the back end. And here is the SQLite database. It's called college.db. We just experienced how tedious it is to have to start two separate applications in order to get our solution to work. This is where you benefit from Aspire.net, among other things. It allows you just to start one project and your whole solution works. So I'm going to close this browser window and stop the client app and also the server app. I will go back to the root folder of the application where we have a solution file right here. And in the next step, the solution file will be overwritten. Let me now add Aspire to the solution. And we do that by doing .NET new Aspire. Now, if I just do that, I'll get an error message saying that there's already a solution file and I should use the minus minus force switch in order to overwrite that. So that's what I'm going to do minus minus force. And it's going to add a new solution file. Let's open our solution in VS Code. Now in VS Code, I do have the C Sharp Dev Kit extension. And what that allows me to do is to view the entire solution. So it gives me this solution explorer tab. In the solution, I've got two projects. One project is the app host and the other project is service defaults. 
but the other projects are missing. So let me add them. So I'm going to click here on the top node and choose add existing project. And I'll navigate over to the back end, which is this one here. Choose the CS proj file, select project and add one more project as well. Add existing project and navigate to the front end, which is the Blazor app and choose the CS proj file, select project. We will need to make some references. The app host needs to have a reference into the Blazor gRPC client project and it also needs to have a reference into the gRPC students project. So let's do that. So I'm going to click on app host and add project reference into the client and again add project reference into the grp students which is the back end also the blazer grpc client needs to have a reference into the service defaults project same with grpc students so i'm going to start with the blazer grpc client and add a project reference into the service defaults and the same with this grp students add project reference into the service defaults next we will add this code in both grpc students and blazor grpc client in the program.cs and this code is simply like an agent that is aware of the fact that these projects belong to a dotnet aspire orchestration let me start with the client and i'll go into the program.cs and right before this app builder build we're going to add this code let's close this and do the same with grpc students program.cs and also in the same place just before app equals builder.build we put this in there the next step is to put some code in the orchestrator the actual orchestrator here is our app host project. So let's open up the program.cs and we will put this code in there. We put it right before builder.build.run right here. What we're doing here is saying that we want to add the backend, give it the name backend and it returns a variable grpc. And we're going to add also another project which is the front end. We give it the name front end and it refers to the grpc project which is this variable here we have one more step to do and the step that we need to do is in the front end we have an address that points to the back end if you go now to the grpc client program.cs you'll see that there is an address here that is hard coded to localhost 5099 it doesn't have to be that way because we actually gave the a name to the backend. So we can take this name, which is simply backend, come to the client and replace this with backend. And it will know where to find that because there is a DNS resolution that Aspire takes care of. We are done. Let us test our application. To test our application, let's get back to the terminal window and go into this folder, which is the app host folder. So I'm going to go CD grpc blazor solution dot app host. And in here I can do dot net watch. And just with this one command, it's going to orchestrate the entire solution. I don't need to start the back end first and the front end first. It will do everything for me all at the same time. So this is what we get. It needs a token. So let's go over here and copy this token from the terminal window and paste it in here. Click on login. You can see that our aspire.net is being orchestrated. Let's go to the client, click on the client here. And there you go, it's working. And of course we can go to the back end too, but because this is a gRPC application, there's not much you can see from the back end other than this message in the browser. Of course, 
you can go to the console for example and look at the back end terminal window you can look at the front end terminal window you can look at this tab and this tab and this tab for all sorts of other additional information. .NET Aspire has orchestrated for us the connection between multiple projects and produced a single starting point in the host project. Mission accomplished. We have achieved our objective by adding .NET Aspire into the mix of projects and wiring up a couple of agents. Thank you for watching this video and if you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up. Until I see you again, cheers.